So I'm going to pass it over to Dave right now and just, you know, thank you in advance for your time and your wisdom and, and your generosity in sharing it with everybody today. Hey, everybody. Nice to see you all. I, want, I see a cool background, like somebody's in space, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but but uh, like uh, Cynthia and uh, Jill said, uh, I'm Dave. I've been a talent manager for 22 years, so I started when I was one. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's all I know how to do. It's, I did it, started doing it right out of college. And uh, my, my thing, the way I work as a manager, is I look for new faces to develop and represent. Um, I'm not so concerned about resumes. I'm just more concerned about spark and drives and commitment and confidence and having fun and making a little bit of money so I can eat. Um, the, like I said, like I'm taking this opportunity to just find some new faces, you know, and this is uh, Jill and Cynthia came to me and I was like, yeah, this would be great to do um, because we're not doing much this, these days. So, uh, unfortunately, everything is kind of stalled as they suss everything out. Uh, getting productions back up and running is probably going to be the last thing that comes back, even behind a lot of other industries, uh, as they have to cover all their bases, dot all the T's and cross all the I's, or vice versa, uh, getting everybody back onto sets. So, but in the meantime, you know, uh, there's a lot of people in the industry using the uh, time mm -hmm. to, to meet and work with actors and kind of keep those creative juices flowing. So that's what mm -hmm. I've, I've been really encouraged to see all that. I know a lot of people have been doing coaching and lessons and everything. And that's a lot of uh, original content. I see uh, a lot of clients posting original content and uh, that's really, really encouraging uh, to see, especially because around these times, there's probably a lot to talk about, a lot to learn and uh, develop careers and keep uh keep those creative juices flowing as i say so i'm anxious to see what you guys are going to bring today and uh i talked enough about myself i guess but uh i i have fun doing my job and uh, i enjoy it so i'm gonna enjoy seeing what you guys are going to do today and that's awesome if you bring your dog into your camera shots because i like dogs too so <laughs> All right, why don't I start? We've, we've compiled a list of really, really common questions. Um, so we'll cover those at first. And then if there's anything that we haven't covered that you have um, questions on, we'll do that in the Q&A. So the biggest question that, you, that I always get from my students is how do I get seen by managers and agents? What, you know, how do you get started? How do you get seen? How do you get appointments? Well, there's a lot of different avenues. I think, uh... I think a lot of people on here probably are finding their way into that. Uh, has anybody here been represented now or been represented in the past? So, um, and who here has never been represented? I didn't ask you, Jamie and Cameron and Lily. Where's Lily? I see you, Lily. Um, who is not represented or has never been represented? Okay, so, you know, it's about getting your face out there, uh, getting into workshops, whether it's in person or virtual like this, uh, getting in front of uh, the right people. Um, it's uh, showcasing, and this is a showcase, a digital version of it. Um, sending your picture, you know, via email. I mean, I don't know anybody. I mean, we still get hard copy submissions, but not too many these days. Um, you have to have your profiles on the casting websites. Does everybody know what the casting websites are? Who does not know what the casting websites are? It okay. would be a good idea to list the ones because they're okay. some have come and go, gone. All right. So uh, the one in space doesn't know. Okay. So you need to have profiles on castingnetworks.com, actorsaccess.com. Um, a lot of people have profiles on backstage.com. Uh, you don't really need that once you get represented, but you know, some people have that. Um, those are the, those are the primary ones and actorsaccess.com is the actor's lifeline to the industry. That's the most important profile that you have to have when you're, once you're represented, you, you have to have it and it's good to have when you're not represented. 
you could self submit on there. Um, there's projects that go through casting, uh, come from casting directors that go through agencies, go through managers that also appear on Actors Access. So you have opportunity to submit yourself also without representation. Uh, casting networks, like I said, same thing, have your profiles up there. Good, really good, I like to say killer headshots, ones that really pop, pop off the screen or back in the day when casting directors would get hard copy submissions and they go through hundreds and hundreds of headshots. We used to mail out packages of headshots like this thick for like one movie. It was crazy. Um, that was way back in the day when we used to get breakdowns, which is how we receive uh, our projects through the fax machine. Does everybody know what a fax machine is? No. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, it's, that's the way you gotta get, you gotta have those profiles, you gotta showcase, take, uh, take classes, get out there, um, because the goal is to get into the casting rooms, right? That's the ultimate goal. And a an, um, way to do that is to get representation via agency or manager. And, uh, but again, you can, you don't need an agent or a manager to self-submit yourself. And when they are lucky enough to get in front of you, um, what, what does that entail? What do they have to prepare? Um, I, I assume now it's not an in-person meeting, but I assume that it's normally an in-person meeting and they have to prepare something for you. Well, you know, in whether it's me or anybody else, it's, it's going to be different everywhere. I always say you're always prepared in this business if you expect the unexpected right? Always expect the unexpected. Don't overthink. Go in, meet with the person, whether it's virtual or in the room, once the agencies and offices all open back up again. Um, and be yourself. Be natural. Don't be over-programmed. Don't check off the list. Oh, I have to say this, this, and that. Just be real. Be natural. Um, and introduce yourself. Pull them in, get them interested in you, draw them in from the beginning. You know, they're just, they want to have a good day, just like you want to have a good day. And of course, you're going to bring those nerves in the door, right? Or nerves into the Zooms. But check those before you, before you go in, because they're rooting for you. You know, they want you to succeed. If you succeed, they succeed, whether it's a casting director, an agent, or a manager. Um, you'll hear lots of different things from lots of different people um, in what to prepare. But you're prepared if you're yourself, you're having fun, you're engaging, you show your personality, right? And have fun in the room. Don't, don't be like, okay, I did my slate. I have to say my first name and my last name and my age, right? And where I'm from. That's a little too over-programmed from my viewpoint. So just go in and chill and be yourself. I think that's a really, really good point um, that you made about when you succeed, when you, the actor succeeds, the person you're in front of succeeds. Um, I, you know, I, I think as actors, we often give our power away in the room. We give our power away to the casting director. We give our power away to, to everybody. And, and what we don't realize is that, that, they want you to succeed because they want they they want you to be the one. Guess what? You walk in the door and you do a great job, and, and they get to hire you. They 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 don't have to look anymore. You know that their job is done. So, um, I just think that's a really good point to remember that they're you know they're just people too. And and if you can bring yourself and your your own charm and whatever it is, your goofiness, your quirkiness, whatever it is, that makes you an individual. Um, they don't want to, yeah. right? You, they don't want a cookie cutter. My, I mentioned in the other workshop with Trapper, it's, I, I took a really great um, uh, master class with Barbara Cook, who was a huge, huge star um, long before you guys were all born. Um, and her, her biggest point was to be yourself. She's like, don't try to be Frank Sinatra. There's already been a Frank Sinatra. Be you. Don't try to be Barbara Streisand. There's already a Bar Barbara Streisand. Be you because there's only one you and um, or Beyonce or Alicia Keys you know for a little bit more modern yeah exactly 
Exactly. But it's a validation that, you know, you are enough. I don't think actors hear that enough or, or believe that, you know, that you're enough just the way you are. Um, so moving on, well, in that same vein, I'm sorry, what do the parent, what should the parents of minors expect in, um, in the situation where they've got, the kid has a meeting with you about possible representation? What should they expect? They should the expect- parents, Are they gonna be in the room? Are they not gonna be in the room? Are no, they no, the parents should expect not to be in the room because when they go, when a minor goes and uh, auditions for a Burger King commercial or a Verizon commercial, guess who's not in the room? Mom or dad, right? So you won't go into the room either when you're meeting with the representation. At the end, maybe, and not at all places, so. Again, different, it's different all over the place, but don't expect to be in the room with them. Just uh, expect to get them to where they need to be, fill out a sign-in sheet with all the current information, and uh, that's it. All right, then if you do get signed, what do your parents, what do the parents need to know in terms of expectations? What, what happens next? Somebody's lucky enough to get signed. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, again, I always say in this business, the crystal ball is always in the shop. So what to expect? I don't know. You could be, that's another thing. Always expect the unexpected. I mean, it could be Jill, you know, right? It could be like five auditions for five, every day for five days in a row, and then nothing for two weeks and then an audition like the next week, right? So- um, Cameron had you, seven in one week, I think, at one point. And um, a lot of these auditions come in super last minute. I don't know that people realize, you know, a lot of times the day before. So you just have to have someone who can run your kid to the city, depending where you live, or you have to be available. Um, Dave always stresses that availability is one of the most important things. So uh, that I think I'm sure that ca catches a lot of people off guard. Um, and Dave, you can also talk about, you know, what happens if a client says no too often about going to auditions. Yeah, basically the, you know, the once you're signed with an agent or a manager, you should be expecting auditions to pop up at any time. Um, and I would say there's always peaks and peaks and valleys in it. Uh, well, sometimes there's just a lot and sometimes there's just nothing for a while. It just depends on what's going on, what the client's right for. Um, you know, I mean, as a manager, I don't work on everything. You know, I look for the more, for the next level, the job, the next level jobs that'll get the client to that next level, to the ultimate goal of like actually making a career. Um, there's different types of agents. There's commercial agents, theatrical agents, voiceover agents. Uh, and some theatrical agents only do theater and they don't do TV and film and some and vice versa. And then there's modeling agents also. So. As a manager, I, we kind of just centralize everything and look at the whole picture. Um, and sometimes the, the best theatrical agency is not strong enough commercial agency. So we'll have a client with another agency for commercials and another agency for theatrical and sometimes with no agency at all and uh, also. So uh, it, it'll just depends on what, what's going on. Uh, and again, you just kind of always got to be ready. <laughs> uh, it's, we'll always call. Actually, no, these days we used to always call. Now we always email and text that you have to check your email that there's an audition for tomorrow or the next day after that, depending on what it is. And you'll be sent all the full information that's available. These days they keep a lot of things kind of under wraps. Uh, on the projects because the big studios like to keep what they're working on uh, under non-disclosure. So, uh, and you just gotta get them to where they need to be. Also, the better thing, even before, you know, this whole Corona situation is uh, uh, virtual auditions were already happening. You know, uh, you are, you're doing self tapes from home. Self tape is the most important part of, uh, 
the acting industry now. Uh, so you have to have a good self tape system, which I'm sure we'll be getting into. And also voiceover self record system for voiceovers. Cause a lot of the voiceovers, even before this, you know, you're auditioning at home for them. Now they're, you're booking, you're booking them at home. So <laughs> that you're actually in your own studio recording voiceovers at home and you send them the file. So, but that's another thing we'll get into. Um, let's cover the difference between a manager and an agent and which do you need? And do you need both or one or the other? Uh, well, I mean, ask 10 different people in this business, the difference between a manager and an agent, and you'll get 10 different answers. Uh, it just depends on um, how, how it's working. Like I work, like my celebrity clients, I have to, I have to handle their lawyer, their accountant, their publicist, um, their agents. So I, that's why I have to find them and get them set up, set up with those kind of things. So that's kind of like later down the line uh, as I, how I work as a manager. And then in the more kind of like starting out phase, it's, you know, I look, we look for those avenues to get started. All right. To get you into the room. Uh, and then you take it from there really. Um, and it sometimes it's, De depending on what's going on, you know, um, we place you with an agency or if sometimes we'll wait until that resume really builds up and we'll get some like the bigger agencies after you like Gersh or, you know, ICM and things like that. Um, but we just kind of like find that avenue and how to get you started and get you in the door. Um, and again, like we kind of look for those next level jobs. There's a lot of jobs out there that just are not worth it, um, that we'd rather our clients be at home doing their homework or hanging out with their family and friends and uh, not, you know, selling their soul down the road for a hundred dollar job. Yeah, so, I'll just come in quickly on that. I used to look through backstage a little bit on my own um, or actors access and what, um, what you can see is you, you can't see all the jobs that the agents and managers can see. You only see kind of the lower level jobs that show up. And anytime I found something that, you know, I said, Dave, what do you think? I, I don't think it, it was ever worth going to. So I realized, you know, once you have a man, manager and agent, you really can sort of put aside that job of trying to scope everything out your, yourself. Don't you think Dave? Yes, I do take that. Um, and uh, the, the, the things that you do find on Actors Access, believe me, you've already been submitted for it. So Either you've already been submitted or yeah. it's not going on. But so. the, and that, but that's also not to, to, self, to discourage self-submitting, you know, before you have any representation. Because you got to, you, that's how I work as a manager. I, I kind of just need, I need to cast a wide web at the beginning for a new client and get them in the room. They got to be seen, you know, they got to get known because if you're not known, you're not getting in, you're not, you don't have the opportunities to go audition. So. I think that's a, um, I think that brings up a really good point, which is there's no excuse to sit around and wait, you know, wait for an opportunity to come to you, especially with technology. Now, um, as you were saying, you've got a lot of clients who are, who are getting themselves out, you know, whatever on YouTube or, you know, creating their own material. You know, there are a lot of people who have launched their own careers without the help of, for instance, a record label. You don't need, it used to be that you needed a record label to have a, a career as a singer. You know, there's no excuse now to not record, you know, write your, write your own music, record it, you know, figure out GarageBand, put it up on a YouTube, you know, whatever. And, and I think the same exists for an actor. If you're not getting the jobs, write yourself something or you know write yourself something create something you know videotape it post it get yourself out there um there's enough technology that you don't have to sit around and wait for an opportunity and then that helps dave or whomever the representative is say hey no but you got i mean maybe the resume is not that thick but look at this kid this is a really interesting person look what he just did i don't know if you agree or not but i i think actors can't sit around and wait yeah i mean i love it because like i have 
I mean, I have one of my clients is a Marish, Marishka Hargitay's son, adopted son on Law and Order. Oh, man, is he antsy. So he's writing his own short films and posting them and everything. So, and I'm seeing a lot of my clients uh, do that, making original content during this time, especially. And uh, they should probably keep doing that when this is, uh, when we're over this hump. So. Okay, so we're at the 31 minute mark. Um, should we move on to commercial copy at this um, point? Or you want to yeah, I think it's really important uh, to touch on rejection. And Jamie Mann can maybe speak up about. Hey, mom. <laughs> no, <just kidding. laughs> Jamie's been with Dave for eight years. He's done a ton of theater. Um, he's gone on countless TV and film auditions, running in and out of the city for years, missing sleepovers, missing time with his friends. Uh, making a ton of sacrifices. Jamie, tell us your story. Did it all work out? <laughs> well, so I signed with Dave when I was, I don't know, what was I, like 10? Eight. And I sang, we were so not in the know that I sang The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow from Annie for my meeting <laughs> with Dave, which was a questionable choice now that I'm looking back but, on it. No, um, I, we were in the car and I, on the way there, I was like, oh my God, Jamie, he might ask you to sing something. Can you sing? <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. You know? so uh, we, were, we were less than prepared, but um, no, I mean, I spent a lot of time. It, it was a lot of auditioning. I mean, a lot of going to the city. I mean, in, in the end, it was really amazing because I met so, so many people. Um, by auditioning, getting into that world. I mean, I think that the end, the, the be all and end all is to book something, but you really do meet some of the most incredible human beings kind of going into the city and auditioning. Um, people like Tommy Redder, some of my coaches now, like I wouldn't have known them if I hadn't been auditioning. But it's really not, like, like Cynthia was talking about before, it's not an easy road. I mean, it's very, very different for everybody. I spent like, probably the first five years not really getting anything. And that's kind of just luck and what ends up happening. Um, but throughout that time, I was dancing, I was singing, I was doing whatever I could to, to improve my craft. Um, but um, then Billy Elliot came along, which I had seen on Broadway when I was younger and it was kind of had always been a dream role of mine. So I spent a lot of time trying to train for the tour, which then closed. And then I tried to potentially go out to London and then that was like kind of shutting down. So then I had, I was lucky enough to get it at the Malt Stupider Theater in Florida, um, which is a good equity house. Um, and then after that, I did it four more times. So I kind of held on to that role and tried to push it out. And I know Addie, Addie's mom is on. Kelly, I think, and we did, we did, um, we did um, Billy Elliot together the last time at the Fulham Theater. So then after that, I was, it was high school, I was doing players, Staples players, and then, um, I mean, still doing as many auditions as I could, and that was, that was hard, and I know, because players, Mr. Roth, he, he like, loves his students, and he doesn't want anybody missing rehearsal, but as an actor, I think that it's really important to remember that your career kind of has to come first. And I had to miss some days where it was like, he was like, you can't miss. And I was like, sorry, I kind of have to. Um, and that's kind of the sacrifice that you have to make. And then, I mean, in November, October, I was auditioning for, I went in for a new Netflix show called Country Comfort, written by Karen Lucas. And I was lucky enough to book that. Um, which was incredible, but even then, like those auditions, I almost like didn't go because I was like, I don't know, whatever. Like I have players, it's I don't have time. It's not, but you have to remember, like that's had I not gone because of some stupid Mamma Mia rehearsal, I wouldn't be in LA right now, and I wouldn't have gotten to do the first four episodes, which was the most incredible experience. Um, but I think kind of the overall message for that is like, just keep on pushing. Like, it won't be easy. It's really not. 
And I think that a lot of kids don't realize that. And it frustrates me because they're like, yeah, I can do it. And I'm sure you all can, but you have to know that it's not simple. And it's not, it's not like a simple task. It's not community theater. It's not you against five other kids. It's you against like thousands, potentially thousands, tens of thousands of people. Um, and it's not going to be easy, but you kind of just have to keep going with it. And if you love it enough, you will. And um, I mean, yeah, just kind of keep pushing. And I mean, Dave obviously has been such an influential part of that because I think having a manager kind of when you are auditioning, there are a lot of roadblocks. There are a lot of doors that you have to open, you have to push through. And I think Dave's kind of a person that can not only help you get through those different stages in the audition process, but potentially kind of reduce the overall stress of trying to like eventually getting to that end goal. But um, yeah, I mean, I've had an incredible experience. It's a hard one, but I think one that has taught me a lot about rejection, helped me kind of foresee what it's really like to be an actor. Um, and Cam, do you have anything that you want to chime in? Uh, no, but... <laughs> yeah same thing um i yeah rejection you, you'll get rejected more much more than half the time you audition um <laughs> even to get a call back it'll take a lot or uh, well not half the time you'll get rejected probably like 90 percent of the time <laughs> you just have to keep auditioning and eventually mm -hmm. and so sometimes you win and most of the time somebody else wins in this mm -hmm. business but that's Nobody loses and you learn, you learn from every experience. Every yeah. audition is its own acting class, you know, it's its yeah. own life. It's its own life lesson. Yeah, so you, guys, it's terribly important. And it, sorry, sorry, Dave, um, continue. Yeah, no, I was just uh, saying, you know, you, you learn from every audition and uh, it's all, it's, uh, I always say you leave it in the room and you keep looking forward. Okay, because it doesn't matter what happens. You go and you give it your all and that you do what you can do. And that's all you can do. And sometimes in the acting industry, actors are just a piece of a puzzle. You're a puzzle piece. And sometimes it's going to fit together and sometimes, most of the time it's not going to fit together. But that's okay because when it does fit and wow, did Jamie's fit, right? <laughs> he, Jamie didn't even have to test for this. He got a straight offer for it. So which is very unusual. So um, he was perfect. It was waiting for him, you know, yeah. this, pro this big project. And then a pandemic happened, whatever. So well, um, <laughs> I want to jump on that because here's, here's, this ties a lot of things in. What Jamie said was that he just kept trying, right? So he's still in the dance classes and he's still in his acting classes and he's still in his singing lessons. This is the thing, guys, I, I am constantly trying to, to, impart this upon my students because it's very very true there's there's very little that we as actors are in control of we can't control whether we get the part or not because we're not we're not the producer we're not the director but what you can control are a bunch of really important things you keep working on your craft all the time if you were not getting paid for it you should be paying for it you should be in a class you should be doing your privates you should be auditioning for shows but keep working on your craft and all of your crafts which includes if you have time like dave in our meeting yesterday dave was like the covid 19 is a perfect time to learn accents you know do you have do you have a british accent down do you have a southern accent down do you have a cockney accent down if you don't you should be doing that right now but never you're in control of your preparation you're in control of your training you're in control of showing up to your auditions on time focused prepared with a good attitude that's what you're in control of. And guess what? If you do all of that, even if you don't get the job, here's your headshot and resume. Here's the pile, here's the garbage can, and here's the pile that goes back in the file for the next time the casting director has an audition. If you show up on time prepared and you do a really good job, but you're just not the right fit, you got the wrong hair color, you got, you're the wrong age, you're the wrong gender, you're the wrong skin color, whatever it is, your photograph and your resume still ends up back in that file where the casting director will bring you back. If you don't do those things, you're likely to end up over here in the trash. That's my Can I just chime in one more thing because I think it's a really, really important thing. Cynthia actually told me this a really long time ago. She said, uh, the goal is never to get the job. Going into audition, I mean, yeah, that may be the end goal, 
But the goal is to show up. And as soon as you show up, you've won. If you get a callback, you've won again. But you never lose. The only way that you lose is by not showing up. And as an actor, it's such an important thing to remember. It's like, okay, getting the job doesn't matter. But I showed up. I, the casting director saw me. And like she said, now if I did a good job, I'm probably in that file that they're going to call back from. You want to just get yourself in that pool and showing up is just the most important thing. Not getting the job. You can't focus on getting the job. You have to focus on going and just doing a good job, doing the best that you can. And then like Dave said, as soon as you leave, it's over. I don't, I mean, it's taken me a while, but I've trained myself to go into an audition, leave the audition, and I don't think about it again. Mm -hmm. And it's just the most healthy way to do it. I agree. Um, I'm typing in, you guys, there's a chat room over on, on the bottom of your screen. You can chat uh, and ask any questions there. Um, Hannah had a question, Hannah and Sebastian had a question about headshot and resume that they don't have one right now. Do you wanna speak on that, anybody? Well, I mean, pretty much, it, every, which one is, I'm just trying to see, I'm trying to learn everybody, so. Um, pretty much everybody's a photographer these days, am I wrong, right? Because uh, Instagram, you can like, you know, take your own headshots, right? I say, if you don't have headshots, throw, have uh, mom or dad throw you up against the wall and take them. Uh, Cause you can always, you know, used to be back in the day when we had to send people for headshots, it was like developed on film and everything. So they had to like go and they had to be done right and everything. But now these days, pretty much, who doesn't know anybody that can, can't take a good picture? I mean, look at Instagram these days. So get a headshot. Make it your headshot, put it up on your profile on casting networks or Actors Access or Backstage.com. And a resume, I mean, you, you know how to do a resume. And, uh, yeah, if anybody needs a format for a, a resume, we can send you some um, if you need to. There's a question here about what qualities should they be looking for in a manager? What we'll qualities they should be looking for in a manager? Yeah. Um, yeah, somebody, well, whether it's a manager or agent, I feel like it's, you know, or also this publicist, uh, you know, somebody you got to just really vibe with. Um, but also you just, you need to be able to know they can get you in the rooms. You gotta get in the rooms. At some point, uh, you know, you could be picky, but you also, if you want to get into a room, you know, just make sure they, they have a client list that, you know, of <laughs> some relative success, <laughs> um, you know, and you can ask references, you know, it's, it's a small business, you know, or if you really think about it, um, ask around. Uh, but the qualities are the ability for them to get you in front of casting directors. And I always say somebody who's like really cool, like me. <laughs> well, I, I remember being in, in a situation more than once where I had to choose between a, a bigger agency, some, uh, an agency with more clout, who definitely could get me into any room, and an agent that perhaps was not quite up on that same level, but more excited about me. Do you know, and there's, there, there's that balance, because you do want somebody who's really excited about you, who's going to go the extra mile, who's going to pick up the phone again and say, hey, I know she had a bad day, you know, bring her back in, right? Whereas somebody who doesn't care may not put um, that same kind of energy into your career. You want to talk to that? Is that? Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, bigger is not always better in this industry. I would, that's my view. Uh, I have clients that go to big agencies and they get dropped, they get lost, you know, and that's, that's how I work as a manager too. I kind of right. keep, keep a fire lit under, you know, where, and, uh, you know, just making sure nobody gets lost and you're getting your face out there, getting in the room and be able to audition for that project. And like Jamie was saying before, not only auditioning for that project, auditioning for what the casting director is going to be working on next. So, you know, uh, it's, it's, at the, it's depending on where you are in your career, I, I would say, Cynthia, I guess, you know, if you're established, you know, maybe you can choose 
you know, and you have choices. Sometimes you don't have choices, you know? So sometimes you just want to. My, my manager was the one who stayed. If I was it with an agency, a bigger agency, like a CAA or William Morris, I, I had a manager who, who would stay on top of them because I totally would have gotten lost. Yeah, that's right. what we they're, do. I, they're just throwing a ton of pasta at the wall to see what sticks. Yeah, so, I mean, I always... I say this and now I really shouldn't say it these days because a lot of people are vegetarians, but I say, uh, you know, I slaughtered a, the cow so you could just eat the steaks. So, and that's what I do. I'm, I'm the one that's annoying the agents, the annoying the casting directors. And that's how your manager should really work, you know, is do that for you. And again, apologies to any vegetarians. Um, there's a question. If you have an agent, when is the right time to add a manager? Do you have an agent with the right time to add a manager? Probably if, uh, I would say maybe if opportunities are drying up, agents will stop sending you on auditions, first of all, if you don't go on auditions, okay? Um, also, if you're not, get, you're not getting callbacks, you know, they may slow down because they, they can send only a certain amount of people. As a manager, what I do is I look at all the auditions, I look at the callbacks, and I and I sometimes I look at the no callbacks, and I figure out, well, what's going on here? Why is this is something not working? Do we need to change something up? And that's kind of like what I do with the with providing a little bit TLC with my clients. And then agencies can drop you. They have short term contracts. They can drop you. They can slow you down. You know reduce the amount of opportunities. As a manager, I'll always find an opportunity for the client to get in, whether or not the agent is able to get them in. So that's how I kind of, we kind of work as a management company is, you know, we'll get you in directly through us if the agency can't. And, you know, sometimes we'll just go after the appointments and not wait. Because agents come and go. I mean, they, they're there and then they leave and they go to another agency or they get transferred to another department. And agency, agents have to keep book jobs to keep their jobs, you know. As a manager, like I said, I've been, here, I've been doing it for 22 years. I stay with my clients. I believe, with my, I believe in my clients. Um, no matter if they're with an agent or if they're not with an agent. And if it's working with an agency or if we need to switch an agency or take them away from an agency, we'll take care of all of that for you. So you could just go home and do your homework and eat dinner and be with your family and just make sure you still get on the auditions. So, so it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Lily would like to know, um, what should I be doing to keep myself on my A game during this time? It's a great question. Well, what are you doing now, Lily? Um, I'm take, hi, I'm Lily. Um, I am doing online dance classes with my dance studio and do, and attending these workshops and master classes and, um, and voice lessons. We do voice lessons a lot. So then um, why, why are you asking? You're doing everything well, because right. Well, <laughs> anything else like, I should be doing. Okay, I'm we'll throw in the, we were talking before about, are you good at accents? Um, one. Oh, no. One accent? No, right. I, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. I'm mean, going uh, attend YouTube University. I mean, that's <laughs> where, I mean, I'm like a plumber and an electrician now <laughs> because of YouTube. So, and not just because during this time I've learned before, but I just learn everything from YouTube and I go on and I've I don't do accents, but there's so many accent tags on YouTube. So, and we just had Natalia audition for a Russian role. Uh, and she couldn't do a Russian accent, but she went on and she learned uh, Russian accents from there and also got on with a speech, speech person too. So little things like that, that'll kind of like uh, hone your craft as an actor, as a performer, you know, so. If you could do a Southern accent, be able to do an, a British accent. If you could do a British accent, do, you can do an Irish accent. So, okay. And also Rus Russian is a very big accent these days. Everybody wants Russian accent. So just to throw that out there. All right. Thank you. Um, let's see. Cynthia, since, since we're running um, way past our time, should we ask people to submit their questions um, 
to the to the triple threat email address and we'll get them all answered that way and go ahead yeah, with we don't have any new questions anyway so we can move on we can move on um and if there's time at the end there were essentially the only thing that, that was on our list that we didn't cover is what jamie was bringing up and you had brought up about um about the sacrifices and the consequences you just have to assume you have to assume that your life is going to get upended on a regular basis, getting last minute auditions, getting them when something else is going on. You've got a test and three papers due tomorrow and you get a 12 page, you know, a reading for tomorrow that's 12 pages. That's usually the way it happens where it's like, ah! um, and then, you know, scrambling to get in the city if you're actually having an in-person audition, um, giving up other social, um, other social life, aspects. Um, I know I gave up a lot of my social life. I had to drop off the ski team. I told everybody I got an F in orchestra because orchestra was always final period and I got an automatic F for missing orchestra so many times. Um, you just, you have to, and, and time management is really, really, really important when you're still in school. You know, if you have a free, if you're doing this and you've got a free period, go to the library, get your homework done. Like, don't, don't, you know, fart around with your friends in the cafeteria. You know, you're going to have to, your time management is terribly important to keep your grades up. Um, I think those were the biggies on our list. Um, so you want to move on to the commercial copy? 